All right. Uh, when the program committee saw this talk, uh, we were curious, and we hope that you are too. Um, this is Kohei, who's joining us all the way from Japan, uh, from NTT. Please join me in welcoming him to the stage. Okay, good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Kohei Tokunaga from NTT Corporation. Um, I'm mainly working on things related to continental runtimes and builders, and I'm a maintenance build kit and a reviewer of CNCF container D. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about container to WASM converter. Uh, this is an approach to run existing, existing Linux based applications on WASM and browser uh, without modifications to apps. So, First of all, this is a summary of this talk. Uh, porting apps to WASM it costs time for recompilation and re-implementation, and container to WASM enables running unmodified containers on WASM, leveraging CPU emulators. And we, we've created an extension of VS Code for the web uh, to run containers on browser. So, first of all, why porting apps to WASM? Well, we can find lots of use cases of porting applications to WASM in community. Uh, one of the benefits of porting apps to WASM is um, leveraging existing apps on browser. Uh, they can be used, used as dev environment, as building blocks and for demo pages, etc. And languages including Ruby and Python and databases like SQLite 3 and Postgres are ported to WASM and can be used on browser. And second benefit is that applications can leverage WASM features. For example, apps can be sandboxed by WASM, and it's highly portable and can run on anywhere uh, the runtime is available, including browser. And there are WASM-related technologies uh, like, uh, that are useful, uh, including pre-initialization of applications by Wiser and record and replay by Timecraft. But porting apps to WASM is not easy, actually. Um, this requires developers to at least recompile the application. And it might require re-implementing the part of application uh, if it can't run on WASM. And there are fa some factors uh, that causes this incompatibility. First one is uh, the difference of binary format. So non-WASM binaries like x86-64 don't run on WASM, so recompilation will be needed for porting apps. And the app might need to be redesigned for WASM architecture, and this might include eliminating like a fork and exec related calls, etc. And kernel APRs are also different. Uh, if application relies on Linux specific feature, it needs to be re implemented, uh, not to rely on that. So some of the issues uh, can be mitigated by compilers WASM target support, but they still don't provide fully compatible APIs to the existing system. So can we port a modified, a modified applications to WASM? So here, Container to WASM converter comes in. A container to WASM is an experimental converter of Container to WASM. It receives an arbitrarily Linux-based container as the input and it outputs an WASM image that runs the container on WASM. The Linux-based containers and applications in it run on WASM without modifications. And this is achieved by CPU emulators ported to WASM. And using this converter, containers can run on WASM runtimes and on browser, as shown in the pictures in, in this slide. So container to WASM converter outputs an WASM image that supports WASI by default. Basic features are supported, including STDIO, environment variables, and sharing directly from the host to the container. And networking is also usable. As of now, networking stack needs to run outside of the runtime. So I'll talk about it, this feature later. And the following uh, command line shows an example of running Ubuntu 22.04 container on WASM. The so uname command uh, tells it is a Linux x86-64 uh, environment, and container's root file system is available on WASM, as is, and direct release on the host can also be mapped into the container. And containers are converted to WASM, so of course, 
it can run on browser as well. There are two types of configurations are available. First, you can run the container converted to WASI image on browser. Actually, there are some existing on browser WASI host implementation available in community, so you can use the favorite one. And another configuration is based on Emscript 10. Uh, container through WASM can emit Emscript 10 WASM image plus JS files that run on browser. And please note that some features that rely on WASI, like wiser pre-initialization, are unavailable for Emscript uh, image as of now. And networking can also be enabled for containers on browser. I'll describe it later. And the picture in this slide is an example of running Ubuntu 22.04 on browser. And containers converted to WASI image can perform networking. As of now, it relies on networking stack running outside of the WASI runtime. This is provided as C2W net command. The example in this slide shows running Alpine Linux on WASM, and this downloads figlet command from the internet using apk command and runs it. As of now, this works on WASM time and was raw. And containers converted to WASM can perform networking on browser. There are two types of configurations. Uh, the first configuration relies on networking stack helper running outside of browser that networking stack forwards the container's packets on the machine. Pros of this approach is that uh, the container can access to anywhere accessible from that uh, host side networking stack without restrictions by browser. And cons is uh, this requires, of course, running and managing extra networking stack daemon outside of the browser. And another configuration allows the container on browser performing networking without extra networking stack daemon outside of browser. So the networking feature is implemented purely on browser. A pro of this mode is that uh, this is an easy to use approach uh, because extra demo is not needed. But con is that uh, it only supports HTTP and HTTPS as of now and browser's security restrictions are applied to the container as well. Let's say container cannot access to cross-origin restricted sites and some HTTP headers called forbidden headers aren't controllable from the container. So actually you can try the demo of the containers on browser uh, on the demo page hosted on GitHub pages uh, as, shown, as shown here. And uh, yeah, on that page, actually we have uh, several demos for x86-64 containers and RISC-V containers. And we have three images here, um, but uh, yeah, let's try Debian uh, image today. And then you can see the black screen in this page. Um, now this page, uh, yeah, now, okay. Now, yeah, this page um, loads the WASM image converted from the Debian container image uh, described uh, at the top of this page. and. Uh, uh, then the WASM image is fully loaded to the browser and uh, it starts a shell uh, of Debian container. And uh, by executing a uname command, uh, you can confirm that uh, this is a Linux x86-64 environment. And uh, according to slash etc slash OS release, uh, this is a Debian container. And uh, you can see the root file system at slash and uh, Actually, this page also enables the on-browser networking stack. Uh, so uh, this is the CURL command uh, pointing to this GitHub page itself. Uh, actually, the networking is not so fast as of now, so you need to wait for a while to complete the command. Then you'll see the fetched HTML contents on the shell. So how container to WASM works? Uh, first of all, the conversion steps from the input container to output WASM is written in Docker file and runs on Docker build as a build kit. 
And uh, we use uh, CPU emulators compiled to, compiled to the WASM uh, for running native binaries on browser. For x86 for containers, box emulator is used. And for RISC V containers, a tiny MU emulator is used. Emulator and dependencies are packaged into a single WASM image. For WASI image, uh, WASI VFS provides packaging ability. For ImScript and image, uh, we use dash dash preload dash file feature of packaging. And, uh, and for minimizing the startup time, we experimentally use wiser pre-initializer and this pre the kernel during the conversion step. So at runtime, uh, the container immediately starts on the pre-booted kernel. And the uh, emulator sees mapped directories via WASI APIs, FD APIs. And uh, these pre-opened directories are shared between uh, the emulator and the guest OS via Vertio 9P. And for networking on WASI images, uh, WASI runtimes, uh, the emulator provides Vertio Net device uh, to the guest Linux. And as shown in the picture, uh, the emulator forward packets relying on the network stack uh, C2WNet running outside of the WASI runtime. The emulator and C2WNet are connected over WASI's SOC APIs, and C2WNet is implemented based on Gvisor slash tap slash VSOC, which is a networking stack written in Go. And uh, we added some features for our use case, like uh, WASI runtime support. And for on-browser configuration, as shown in the picture, again, we use C2WNet forwarder running outside of the browser. Uh, the emulation emulator and browser, the emulator on browser and C2WNet on the host are connected over WebSocket and Exchange packets. And another approach is running networking stack on the browser. So host, host side networking stack daemon is not needed. Uh, this network, networking stack supports forwarding HTTP and HTTPS connection uh, to the outside of the browser using fetch API. And uh, HTTPS connection is terminated at the networking stack on the browser uh, with its own certificates and uh, the connection is re-encrypted by fetch API. And actually, this is an easy to use configuration uh, because uh, the entire networking stack runs on browser. Uh, however, there are some uh, restrictions by Fetch API. Let's say accessible sites are limited by cores and forbidden headers uh, can't be controlled by container, etc. And uh, of course, we expect applying the ability of uh, running containers on WASM to various kinds of use cases, but uh, one of the interesting ones should be uh, running containers on browser-based IDEs. Uh, so VS Code Container WASM is an experimental extension of VS Code for the web. Uh, this enables to run containers on browser and provides terminal uh, to the VS Code on the browser. Uh, the container runs on browser, so you don't need to prepare remote containers. And the workspace directly is mounted at the slash workspace, and uh, networking is also available based on fetch API with restrictions by browser, uh, like codes. And this is implemented using uh, Microsoft slash VS Code dash WASM for WASI host for containers as of now. And again, you can try this uh, extension on your browser. Uh, here we use github.dev here, um, and uh, this is a, a uh, VS Code ID integrated to GitHub. And uh, uh, here you can uh, here you can run the container on browser using an extension named container wasm. Um, this is available on the marketplace, and uh, this repo has dash, uh, dot .vs code slash settings.json. Um, uh, this, uh, yeah, this is a config file points to the URL of the Debian container uh, converted to WASM. And uh, yeah, we want to use uh, that uh, WASM image uh, converted from Debian on this workspace. 
So let's launch this container. So when you invoke the command uh, um, run container on browser, uh, this extension reads the uh, settings.json value of the workspace and launches the pointed container on your browser. And uh, yeah, after Watson image is fully loaded to the browser, it starts the shell uh, of the Debian container. And by executing a uh, uname command again, uh, so you can confirm that uh, this is the Linux x86-64 environment. And uh, you can also see the workspace uh, directly is mounted at slash workspace. And for this demo, uh, this converter, con this container contains uh, GCC. So let's compile the C code stored in this repo. The C code is uh, pretty simple. It just prints hello world uh, as shown in the IDE. And uh, yeah, finally, uh, when we execute it out, uh, it prints hello world as expected. Okay, and uh, yeah, not limited to not limited to on browser IDEs. Uh, we believe there are some uh, expected use cases or possible use cases of running containers on Watson. Um, for example, interactive on browser Linux based demo environment, uh, on browser IDEs, sandbox execution environment for containers, and application debugger runnable on browser and record and replay debugging, etc. And yeah, actually this project is still in a very, very um, early stage. So we expect further improvement, of course. Uh, first big one is performance analysis and improvement. And also accessing to OS package repos uh, from browser is also uh, what we currently lack. Uh, so most repos uh, doesn't allow cross-origin access as of now. So uh, these repos need to allow cross-origin access. And other usability improvement um, and graphic support, uh, et cetera, are also we expect. And there are some existing approaches for running a modified applications on Watson. I listed some of them here. V86 is x86, x86 compatible CPU emulator running on browser uh, by Fabian Hema, and it supports a wide variety of guest OSs. And uh, actually, it doesn't support x86-64 as of now, and not target to WASI. And TinyMU is a RISC-V and x86 emulator created by, created by uh, Fabrice Beald, and uh, it can run on browser. And actually, container to Watson uses this for RISC-V emulation. Actually, it doesn't currently support uh, x86-64 CPU emulation, and no uh, not target to WASI. And, uh, Final one is uh, not a VM on browser, but uh, it is binary translation. My AOT, uh, the name will uh, is subject to change, but uh, my AOT is a translator of a Linux Risk Five ELF binary to Watson proposed by Akihiro Soda entity. Actually, it is no, and uh, it is not CPU emulator, uh, and uh, currently it is under the experimental status, so only trivial programs work, and the syscalls are not fully implemented yet. So finally, this is the summary of this talk. Uh, porting apps to Watson costs time for uh, recompilation and uh, re-implementation, and container to Watson enables running a modified container on Watson, leveraging CPU emulators. And uh, we've created an extension of VS Code for the web to run containers on browser. Uh, future works will include uh, performance an analysis and improvement, uh, cross origin enabled, OS package repos, et cetera. Get that all, thanks. All right, thank you. So, a totally different approach than what we saw in the, um, in the earlier talk, enabling lifting and shifting into WASM. Does anyone have any questions? Come in the back. Yeah, thank you for your talk. Um, 
One of the issues that I'm running into with a bunch of my customers is that they actually have a lot of um, old 32-bit Windows PCs that they don't have any ability to lift and shift. I was wondering, uh, have you looked at actually maybe using uh, Windows as the what's being emulated and maybe being able to take like a, uh, I'm going to go back, what, 10, 15 years here, but uh, P to V and then actually take that VM and put it onto Wasm? Uh, thank you for the question. The question was about uh, uh, the plan, the, the support for Windows, especially old Windows. Um, actually, uh, yeah, we haven't, we have not looked uh, to the Windows support yet, uh, but uh, like, uh, yeah, actually uh, the emulation of Windows on browser is kind of, uh, yeah, um, already approached work by V86. So maybe we can, uh, we haven't looked at it deeply, but uh, yeah, maybe in the future we can uh, support uh, non-Linux applications as well uh, on browser. But uh, yeah, yeah, but we don't have any concrete plan yet. So yeah, conc actually proposals and uh, suggestions, suggestions uh, always welcome, yeah. Hey, Kohei, Qu question from over here. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was awesome. I'm into this like inception stuff. I would love to see Wasm time inside a VM, inside Wasm time. <laughs> Let me know. Um, my question is: When you, I assume you've done some benchmarking, uh, what's the performance overhead of this emulation? Is it 10x, 100x? Uh, thank you for the question. The question was uh, was about uh, benchmarking and the performance of this approach. Yeah. Um, as mentioned in this slide, uh, yeah, um, we, we, we have not uh, worked on benchmarking yet. So this is uh, actually kind of top priority of, uh, for, for this approach. Uh, so yeah, um, the main overhead uh, I ex expect is of course CPU emulation. Uh, there is no JIT is done as of now. So yeah, but uh, yeah. Of course, uh, we want to uh, analyze this deep, deep. Yeah, thank you for the question. It is definitely a good question. Andrew Brown, WASNN, and comedy. Only at WASM, or WASM Day. Too many WASM days. Uh, pretty much the same question, just on size. Uh, I know we were talking about performance, but just size-wise, the binary, the, in the end, what's the difference, maybe? The binary size. Yes. OK, thank you for the question. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the question was about, again, uh, performance and especially about binary size. Yeah, as of now, the binary size is big, actually. Uh, for, <laughs> uh, for example, yeah, in terms of, uh, um, yeah, x86, 64 containers, uh, Debian image is currently 200 megabyte, but the original Debian image is like around uh, at most 50 megabyte or, uh, yeah, but uh, it is quite large. And uh, yeah, this is mainly because it contains, yeah, the entire software stack uh, from the Linux kernel to the container. And, uh, and uh, additionally, um, we haven't uh, investigated this overhead yet, but uh, I expect this is also because of the pre-initialization uh, of the container. Uh, the kernel is pre-booted during the conversion, so it contains so much content in the memory, and all of them are snapshotted and uh, packaged into the WASM binary. So, uh, yeah, but uh, of course, but uh, I expect, uh, yeah, we can reduce, we can deduplicate uh, the contents uh, between the snapshotted memory and the, uh, the kernel images, et cetera. So, yeah, I hopefully reduce this uh, size. Thanks for the question. I've, I've got a follow-up question to that. Um, have you explored, um, you know, if I take my Go program and I compile it on my dependencies and I start and do like a from scratch, um, how small of a container have you made with this method? Or a oh way, container wasm? Um, wasm and wasm container? Wasm container. Uh, so when we use from scratch image, um, yeah, when we use from scratch image, um, yeah, uh, so when you, when you use uh, from scratch image plus Go compiler, the final content uh, is expected to be a single binary of the Go uh, language. And uh, 
This approach adds a Linux kernel and the bootloader and emulator to that uh, image. So uh, yeah, the final image will be uh, will contain this content. So maybe uh, will be fat enoughly. But uh, yeah, but. Uh, yeah, actually, no exact number I have currently. So I expect we investigate more about uh, performance. Very interesting talk. Um, I understand the, the hypothetical use case, but I was wondering what was the uh, practical or direct immediate uh, problem NTT encountered that they wanted to solve with this? Oh, th thanks for the question. Uh, the immediate prob problem um, of mine, uh, of us, yeah. Actually, this is a kind of a research uh, activity, so uh, I cannot say anything uh, concrete um, in this stage. But uh, yeah, but uh, hopefully um, this approach is very generic one, so I expect uh, this uh, can be applied to yeah um, variety of use cases. I expect. Yeah, thank. You. Thanks for the question. I think we have time for one more question, but Kohei, I've got a set of containers. Uh, that are Go programs that have little SQL injects. So maybe at lunch we can, I'd love to see how small you can make. I've got a from scratch Go up point chat. Uh, Brent, you got the last question. Uh, so this is really interesting. I'm glad you're like playing around with it. Um, does this give you a path to essentially virtualize any existing Linux application in the browser? So the question is about, uh, um, is this a path for uh, virtualizing any apps on browser. So thanks for the question. Yeah, actually this is the approach of uh, converting containers to Watson. So yeah, I expect uh, yeah, anything can be containerized, uh, can run on Watson as well. But as of now, of course, no native access to devices uh, on the machine. Uh, yeah. Always, always uh, the apps on browser need to uh, need, need uh, use uh, browser APIs to access uh, uh, host devices. So yeah, so yeah, I expect uh, uh, some additional emulation will be needed uh, for supporting uh, non-common, uncommon devices accessing from the browser. But uh, but uh, yeah, but uh, but uh, definitely, um, yeah. Uh, as a assembly and every, everything can be containerized, can run on browser as well uh, by this approach. I expect, yeah. But uh, yeah, but uh, of course, um, yeah, we want we want uh, we want to test uh, for more applications uh, with this approach. So thanks for the question. Okay, thank you very much. Please join me in thanking Kohei for a wonderful talk.